Once you decide to buy a gaming PC and you start doing your research, you will soon enough figure out that the system performance will be massively dependent on your GPU, and then you will find out that there are two types of GPUs, integrated and dedicated GPUs, and while searching which one is the best for you, you will come to the conclusion that having a dedicated GPU is the best course of action for gaming computers. But wait, if you look close enough, there are new generation of CPUs every year, so with new generation of CPUs coming out every year, and with each year integrated graphics becoming better and better, might this be the right time to go with integrated graphics? Not to mention, if you actually start setting apart money for your parts, you will find out that a decent GPU is not cheap, especially if you are on a budget. Is it worth forgetting about the GPU and going all out and buy a high-end CPU so you can build the ultimate budget gaming PC? Don't forget about the budget there, it will be one of the main topics here. So in this video we are going to talk about the benefits of integrated graphics and dedicated graphics in computers. After that we are going to take a look at how much the differ in laptops. Spoiler alert, there is a huge difference between PC and laptops, even if both of them have the exact same generation and tier of CPU and the same GPU. But before we do that, like, comment and consider subscribing if you like computers. And if a lot of you guys subscribe, I promise you, we are going to do some crazy stuff to tech. I don't know what exactly, but subscribe so both of us find out. Now back to the topic in hand, we are going to establish some things before the video even begins. First, yes, you can do some gaming in integrated graphics. They have come a long way. The question that we are going to answer is how much gaming can you do? Second, yes, you need to set your expectation lower. It's not going to be the new generation of dedicated GPUs, but still, you might just be better off with this CPU than a dedicated GPU that is old and low end. So when should you consider one or the other? Before we start comparing them, you need to understand how the integrated graphics and the dedicated graphics work, the benefits of one over the other. If you already know that, timestamps in the description down below. If not, a CPU is much smaller than a GPU, so you might be asking yourself how come that this CPU has the capabilities of the CPU and the GPU at the same time. How does it make sense? First of all, the GPU is not actually that big on its own. The majority of the GPU is just a cooling system, it is still quite a bit bigger than the CPU, but not as much as you might initially believe. Second, the GPU has its own dedicated VRAM. We are not going to go into details about it, but basically the GPU when it's rendering or when you are playing games it's using its own resources. So the CPU can be more efficient because it's only doing CPU stuff. When it comes to integrated graphics, well the CPU has to deal with a much bigger load because it's rendering graphics as well and they work on different architectures. So a dedicated GPU is made with gaming in mind and integrated graphics, the CPU, are made with everything in mind but they do everything poorly. One of the main reasons for that is space. The GPU has a lot of transistors and you can't put that many transistors in such a small area like the CPU. And that is also the reason why integrated graphics are getting better. The transistors are getting smaller and smaller every year and with every year we are able to put more and more of them together in a smaller area. That's one of the main reasons why integrated graphics have become so good. But the more stuff you put inside the more heat it's going to generate and the hotter it gets the slower it will work and all of these small issues together make it so that the integrated graphics are of course weaker than the dedicated ones, at least weaker than the modern dedicated graphics. And don't get me wrong, integrated graphics have come a long way to the point where the majority of the esports games are run perfectly you don't need anything better. But before we discuss that, let's talk about the improvements of integrated graphics and the improvements are major. If you look at this video here, you will find out that even if you go for a high-end 14th generation CPU that came out a bit over one year ago, that CPU has integrated graphics. It can manage to run some pretty popular and demanding games, but these games are running at 1080p, low resolution and low settings, but they are still averaging respectable scores, like CS2 is averaging 67 FPS, Cyberpunk averages around 28 FPS. FPS. But if you look at Grand Theft Auto 5, it averages 62 FPS. And Fortnite averages around 93 FPS. For more information about the video, link in the description down below. But that was with its popular CPU lineup. What if we look at the core Ultra CPUs, which are made for gamers? And I emphasize gamers. Now let's look at this video, where this guy tests the latest second generation of core Ultra CPUs. And with the high end CPU and high end PC parts, again, for more information about everything, video link in the description down below. But but if you have everything and you don't have a GPU, you can get around 70 FPS on Cyberpunk with low settings. And on Overwatch, with mid to low settings, you can get over 100 FPS. For more information about the other game's performance on this CPU, check the whole video. It should tell you enough about Intel's CPU's graphical performance. But there's more. People are saying that Intel is no longer the best. The word in the street is that AMD has the best CPU. And is that true or false? Well, if we take this video into account, you will for sure find out that AMD 
is faster than Intel, but not as much as you might think. At 1080p, it is about 11% faster. And by the way, this video has the most data when it comes to games and even tells you how good they work with upscaling and frame generation. So if you want just raw data, I highly suggest you watch it. But before you do that, watch this video till the end. Now back to the technology that these companies use to achieve these numbers. I was looking at these companies really closely, studying their architectures and I did a lot of research. And by a lot of research, I mean I went on YouTube, watched other people's videos and then came back and made my own. Anyway, this is a study of a lot of videos so you can get the answer faster and clearer. Now the majority of people who know about computers will tell you that the numbers that I have shown you, the numbers of average FPS, are like cheating because they have turned on frame generation in the settings. If you don't know, every company has frame generation. Even if you have a GPU from Nvidia, you can still activate DLSS, which is frame generation. If you own an Intel GPU or iGPU, you can activate XESS. If the games support it, and if you have AMD or any other GPU or CPU, because AMD has made this feature available to everyone, you can activate FSR. And even AMD is investing a lot on frame generation because they know that this technology is the next step to having the best experience with gaming on integrated graphics. But what is frame generation? It basically gives you more frames than your hardware is capable of making. In theory, it sounds like magic. In reality, it's much worse because it generates frames, but sometimes they are not as clean since the actual frames are not directly from the game. They are what your hardware thinks the game is going to look like, more or less. So if you have a good stable frame rate, it can make your game smoother. But if you have a really bad frame rate, then the frame generation might just make things even worse. So it is a good solution, but it definitely has its caveats. Now let's talk about computers. First, should you buy a PC with integrated graphics? And the answer is simple. If you want to just browse on your computer, yes, but definitely you should not buy it. You are better off buying a cheaper CPU and a really cheap GPU. You will be better off with that. Not to mention you will be able to play games at a very respectable frame rate and you don't have to stick with low graphics. Even if you buy a really old GPU, the point I am trying to make is that integrated graphics have gotten better but not to the point where they are worth buying because CPUs that are high-end and have really good integrated graphics are expensive. You can buy a decent CPU and a low-end GPU and they will perform so much better at everything, not just gaming, because the CPU doesn't have to take all the load. Even if you want to edit videos or do other stuff that the high-end CPUs are able to do on their own, if you have a dedicated GPU, you will have a better time using the programs and apps that you want to use. But of course, they are not as efficient. Now, things get interesting when we start talking about laptops, because first of all, the dedicated GPUs in computers and in laptops, they don't perform the same. In computers, they are far more powerful because they can get all the juice they need. They can get as much energy as they need. They are not limited to the voltage. Second, laptops are thin. Most of the time, the GPU itself is a lot taller than the laptop. And there is a good reason for that. And that's heat. The bigger something is, the easier it is for that thing to get rid of heat. The third is cooling. Don't forget, computers have a lot more fans. And those fans are a lot bigger. So in laptops, things are a bit different. In laptops, it makes a lot more sense to buy a laptop with integrated graphics. And some of the reasons I mentioned. But except that, what else is important? And when you buy a laptop, one other thing that you might appreciate is battery life. Laptops with dedicated GPUs are not battery friendly. They don't compare to a laptop with integrated graphics. Depending on what laptop you buy. If you buy one with integrated graphics, if you start your day with the laptop fully charged, then that might last you the whole day. But if you have dedicated graphics on your laptop, then that day might turn to two hours. Then we have noise. I know I mentioned heat, but when something gets hot, then those fans are going to ramp up. And it's different when the fans are making noise right at you. It is not pleasant. Even if you are a bit further away, like if you own a PC, it is still not ideal. But if you are right at it, the noise is bad. Not to mention even the keyboard sometimes starts to heat up. And the CPU with integrated graphics is not perfect. It is still going to heat up. It still requires cooling, but they are much more efficient and much more easier to cool. Third is performance. If the laptop has the same specs as the PC, that does not mean that the laptop is going to perform the same as your computer. I know it makes sense for them to perform the same way since they have the same names, but they don't. And there are many reasons for that. Like I said, space is a huge factor. So they need to make the parts smaller. And when you make something smaller, that thing is going to be weaker. The GPUs even have less VRAM. If you want, you can go and watch videos on YouTube. The difference in performance in computers versus laptops that have the same specs, sometimes the difference is almost 50%, which is not good because the difference is not small enough that you can just ignore. It's not something that you can just not think about. It will actually make your GPU feel like it's a couple of years old. And then we have voltage. You remember when I said that the battery life in laptops with dedicated GPU 
is much shorter well you should also know that that time is not going to be quality time because gaming laptops when they are not plugged in they are going to be slower as well it depends on what you do if you are editing you are probably not going to notice it but if you want to game and go somewhere with your laptop then those 1% loss might hit you hard and the same goes for laptops with integrated graphics but the difference between plugged in and not plugged in is much smaller because the laptops are still getting the voltage needed the only difference here is that if it is plugged in then the voltage is much more stable which in turn will boost your performance but the things that you are going to do on a laptop with integrated graphics are not as intense so you might feel the difference but the difference will be much more smaller where I am trying to get is that if you want the most performance out of your gaming laptop you are better off having it plugged in so what should you buy well ideally you would want a high-end computer for when you are at home for maximum performance and a high-end laptop with integrated graphics for maximum battery capacity for when you are not at home so you can still do most things that you would want to do on your computer without a care in the world for battery life but I know that that is not realistic for anyone everyone is going to choose one or the other and they are going to stick with it until something changes so let's do a fast recap of what is the best choice for people with different needs while we talk for the pros and cons first the PC its main reason for existing is performance if you have your PC with integrated graphics it will have much less gaming performance it will be far more efficient if it is on integrated graphics the performance in gaming and in everything that requires a GPU is much greater laptops their main reason for existing is portability if you have it with integrated graphics you will have a lot more performance than the laptop with integrated graphics but still it will be behind the PC and you will need to have it plugged in integrated graphics on a laptop efficiency battery life portability and I know this does not make sense to say but ease of mind just knowing that you can use your laptop for the whole day without a care in the world it's huge when it comes to peace of mind so what should you buy well there are only four types of people who are on the market for computers first are the boring ones they are the ones that are on the go they don't need performance because they don't game but they browse the web and they watch Netflix so they can get the laptop with integrated graphics simple choice now the second ones are the ones that still don't game but they have a room they have budget and they don't go out as much they think that they should get the PC with integrated graphics because their system will be much more efficient and they can get the latest CPU but what they should really get is a cheaper CPU and a mid-range GPU just for those times when they want to game or if they plan on starting gaming because let's be real when it comes to computer efficiency matters but not as much as when it comes to laptops since they are always plugged into the wall it just doesn't matter as much at least that's my opinion tell me your opinion in the comments down below does the efficiency matter to you to the point where you would sacrifice performance now let's get to the third type of buyers and these are the cutting edge buyers they want the latest they might not need it but they will buy it and they want it they already know what they want they want the high-end desktop PC and they will get it now the fourth type and these are the worst because these are the buyers who want to game but they can't get a high-end PC because of their circumstances they range from people who work abroad a lot to students who study abroad now they can't get a PC with the degraded graphics because they travel a lot so they will have to settle for a laptop with dedicated graphics unfortunately and when it comes to integrated graphics they are good and they have come a long way but if you want to game they are still not good enough but with how rapidly the tech is changing and the improvements on frame generation this might change in the near future by the way tell me in the comments down below if I have missed anything important or if I have missed any other kind of buyer and don't mention the people who are in a budget because we all are and I know that and with that out of the way thanks a lot for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next one